Uh, let's welcome in Jim Salisbury to the show. Hello, Jim. Hola, amigos. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is perfect golf weather, Jim. I mean, I hope you're getting out there on the links this week. <laughs> I, I haven't. No, no uh, we got to correct oh. that. It's uh, it's it's. It just, I hate, I hate golf. Don't ask me. <laughs> As every true golfer says. Oh, man. Uh, so, Jim, yesterday, Rob Thompson makes a little bit of news when he flip-flops Taiwan Walker and Christopher Sanchez between Thursday and Friday. Now, Sanchi, as they call him, gets an extra day's rest, an extra, extra day's rest. Uh, and Taiwan Walker... I, I read into it as though it's probably a better matchup against Spencer Arigetti, the young kid for the Astros, than it is against Max Fried for the Braves on Thursday. You could look at it as the last opportunity before the roster expands September 1st. What did you make of yesterday's roster kind of flip-flop there? Yeah, I think both of those points are, are, are legit. Um, though, you know, you're pitching against the other team's lineup, uh, not necessarily Arigetti. I do understand, though how it all fits in. Um, I, I kind of take Rob at his word a little bit on this. Um, uh, actually, I almost, you know, completely, you know, they wanted to get Sanchez a couple extra days rest uh, because he's important. He's had a really good year. Uh, he's going to be important in the month of October. And uh, if you look at his innings, I mean, he's, you know, way over his career high and he's, uh, he's, you know, continuing to pile up innings. So uh, you got to protect them a little bit, uh, much like they protect all their guys because they're budgeting for October. Um, so I think it was about getting him a little extra time. Uh, it also puts Taiwan Walker um, out there again um, on his turn. And, um, you know, it's it's like I, I, I think they're down to basically um, a start by start basis with Taiwan Walker. If he goes out there and, and has a decent one, maybe he can earn another one. But I think this is about getting Sanchez a little extra rest. Yeah, well, we have heard a lot of discussion, Jim, around uh, what the Phillies are looking to do with their rotation, maybe rolling out a six man rotation. Uh, now, of course, Taiwan Walker and Christopher Sanchez flip flop. Now, I'm curious to know your thoughts on what the starting rotation will look like moving forward. We saw Colby Allard this past weekend in his first start in 17 uh, games or days where he went out and had a, a, fan, a good showing. Only the two home runs he gave up, solo homers, one of them Bobby Witt Jr., who's given, hitting a lot of home runs against people these days. Um, but what do you anticipate is going to be the starting rotation, especially with 31 games left on the season? Is it six men? Is it possibly going to be five and maybe Taiwan Walker? not in that five-man rotation? You know, what are your thoughts on the future? Right. Um, Rob Thompson said yesterday he he's looking at a five-man rotation. Uh, that's what he wants to go with um, for the time being. And now we're down to basically one month, so the time being is a short period of time. They use that extra guy in this stretch that they're just finishing up now. They had 13 straight days. They were concerned about the workload. They and they didn't have any off days in there. They have one more stretch of 13 straight games. It wouldn't surprise me. Uh, that's mid-September. It wouldn't surprise me if they kind of drop a six-man in there again, uh, depending on how guys are feeling and depending on, you know, where they are uh, in the race, uh, you know, in terms of locking their position up and, and uh, home field advantage, that possibility, just all those balls in play. But uh, he does want to go five man right now. So, uh, you know, your top four are looking pretty good. They've had, they, they've reeled off a pretty good little run here. I mean, Zach Wheeler, what, five straight quality starts, He's having a terrific month of uh, August. Nola's had a couple good ones in a row. Uh, you know, Sanchez has had a, coming off a really good one in the time before that, or one before that was excellent. And Ranger was uh, very encouraging out in uh, Kansas City. So, um, you know, you're, you're going four deep right now. And um, I think they'll just continue to treat that fifth spot um, kind of on a start by start basis. And a lot's going to depend on how Taiwan Walker looks tomorrow night, Wednesday. And if he looks OK, I would expect him probably to get another one. And if he doesn't, uh, then they're going to have to continue conversations that I'm sure they've already had uh, already had, you know, about what to do with him, where to put put him. And um, then at that point, they would probably look at plugging that number five spot i mean they have time on their side because the schedule is dwindling and every time that number five you know there's a month left every time that number five spot comes up five more days have come off the calendar so 
Uh, and I we did the post know, game show Friday after his last start. And Tyler and I calculated it was roughly seven spots starts remaining for the five hole. Right. And after tomorrow night, it'll be uh, after tomorrow night, be uh, what, five um, or six? Six. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I just think they can they can they can plug it if they had to or they can go with Taiwan Walker. If he's, if he's going to um, turn it around here. Um, I'm not really that worried about it because uh, you can go, you know, bullpen games, you can go uh, opener, bulk guy, you can, you know, the roster's going to expand here in a couple days, a few days. You can, um, you know, bring up somebody. I just think you can plug it uh, for, for a month. I mean, you've been plugging two spots for more than a month. I think you can handle it here. But um, as far as Walker, I think he's probably on a start by start or a basis right now to evaluate after each one. And that would earn him another one if he pitches. Okay. Yeah. Jim, uh, the, the struggling offense over the last six weeks, I think you can more or less, uh, just look at the highest paid offensive players on the Phillies and see why they were struggling. Bryce Harper. Mm -hmm. Now after the weekend in Kansas city gets a double in every game, gets the weight of the world off his shoulders last night with the walk-off opportunity. Uh, it looks like he has turned a corner. JT definitely has. And Trey and Kyle even are starting to look better as well. Uh, can we declare the Phillies offense back? <laughs> um, I can declare it moving in the right direction. Uh, and I think, you know, Phillies fans should be heartened by what they're seeing. Um, you know, offenses, you know, they can go in ebbs and flows, unfortunately. And this offense ebbed for quite some time. But, yeah, I mean, they had – you know, a couple of prolific games in Kansas City where they put a pair of eleven spots on the board. Uh, it's and then you, and then last night there was some. You know, they they got hits when it really mattered. So uh, it's good to see, and the top of their lineup is coming through again. They're really important: uh, Schwarber, Turner, Harper, uh, Bohm, Castellanos. Um, you know, I, we're seeing more from the top of the lineup, and that's what was missing when you know they had a rough stretch in atlanta last week and a couple other rough stretches is some of their their top guys at the top of the lineup were just scuffling and uh this would be a really good time to you know kind of slowly get together here as you move into the final 30 games uh, really build up ahead of steam and go into october with some momentum offensively because uh you start to see a little off a little momentum on the uh pitching side you know, Rangers looks like he might be healthy now, and that's a good sign. And you're seeing performance from the other guys, and I would expect performance to follow with Ranger. Um, so this has a chance to line up okay for them in the month of September. Yeah, and Jim, last time we spoke, I remember we signed off with, by the next time we have you on the show, we'll be talking <laughs> about wins, we'll be talking about, you know, positives, the return of Ranger Suarez. It's been three wins in a row. I mean, listen, it's yeah. not... It's not enough to write home about and, and declare them officially, you know, going to go off and win the World Series. There's still a lot of baseball left to be played. Yeah. But it does feel a lot different this conversation than even our last conversation when you look at the weekend the Phillies had. And, of course, this string of wins, scoring runs, back-to-back -back games of 11 runs scored each, that we're starting to see them kind of get back to where they were pre-All-Star break, which is exciting to see. Yeah, no question. And, and – you know, I think it was really big last night to come, have an emotional win on the first game of a homestand against a really good Houston club that you have some history with, obviously, a couple of years ago in the World Series. And to have your big gun have that have that hit, uh, that big hit by Bryce Harper to, to, to walk it off and, you know, have Schwarber on base creating energy and Turner on base creating energy, kind of the way they want it. Um, they got a good start for, from Zach Wheeler. Uh, obviously, he didn't get the win, but, you know, it, was, it wasn't one of those games where everybody was talking and writing about, uh, you know, they, they wasted a good performance by Zach Wheeler. No, they got a good effort from Zach Wheeler, and they cashed it in and, and got themselves in the win column. So I think it was a great way to start off a, a very important homestand because uh, momentum is very important for this team. You know, we saw it during the last homestand. Schwarber hits that kind of rescue grand slam, and they pile up some wins on top of it. Well, this has a chance to – um, kind of, I think, be the same, have the same effect. Uh, last night's walk off win. They got a tough assignment tonight in Verlander. Uh, it's one start under his belt since coming off the um, uh, injured list. But, uh, you know, I think you just got to go out and, and, and try to have good at bats. The at bats are getting better. Stotts at bats are getting better. Marsh had a big uh, 
big hit last night and had a great series out in Kansas City. I mean, that that is such a lift right there. The fact that, you know, he had been really struggling and striking out a lot. Um, people starting to wonder if they were thinking about sending him to the minor leagues. And I think those were discussions that were probably being had because uh, they weren't getting enough. Well, he, he took he he took control of it all and basically eliminated that discussion and that narrative. And he's been a, a real big boost for this team in the last few days. So that's very good to see. So they're warming in a lot of areas. And those are all positives. So, Jim, Definitely. you've seen a lot of baseball games in your life yesterday. Uh, Danny Jansen did something that's never been done in the history of the game before, and that was registered himself on the box score on both teams. Actually had to catch his at-bat when the game was suspended. Now I ask you, the, part of the beauty of baseball is you always see something you've never seen before. What's the strangest thing Jim Salisbury has caught live at a game? <laughs> well, I've probably seen some strange things over the years. Um... Wow. I mean, I've seen some great things. I was at both of Roy Halladay's The Perfect Game and The No-Hitter. Cole Hamill's storybook, uh, No-Hitter in Wrigley Field. I was at that one when Oduble made that circus catch. Um, I was at the game when Don Zimmer went after Pedro. I was covering that game. Hey, you know, wow. Some, you know, like Park. And I could see Zimmer, because I was way up in the press box, I could see Zimmer come out of the third base dugout. And there was a big scrum around home plate. I could see him run all the way around. And I just followed him. And he went right after Pedro. Um, <laughs> I don't know if those are unusual. You know, the Phillies made a trade once. This is a good one. They uh, traded in uh, the trade deadline one year. I think it was at the September trade deadline, the waiver deal. They Maybe it was. I don't know. But they in Shea Stadium, they traded for Todd Pratt and Turk, Turk Wendell from the Mets. So they're playing the Mets. And they make a trade for those two guys. So they guys just had to change clubhouses. And Turk Wendell pitches against the Phillies one day. And the next day he pitches for the Phillies with Pratt behind the plate. They were Mets the day before. And he Pretty gives weird. up a game losing bomb <laughs> to Robin Ventura <laughs> while he's wearing the same undershirt he wore for the Mets the day before. That was pretty unusual. <laughs> That's um, great. Another, another unusual one because we don't see it anymore. I mean, we don't see a lot of complete games anymore, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I saw Cliff Lee pitch 10 shutout innings one night. Uh, in, that in, is uh, strange, yeah. In, uh, it's strange given where the game has gone. We just don't see the complete games. We, you know, we think six innings. Oh, hey, great job, six innings, right? <laughs> Ten, so it, wow. They were, uh, we were in San Francisco one night, and Cliff Lee is just getting the ball, throwing the ball, and mowing the Giants down. And um, all of a sudden, you know, like he's nine shutout innings, no walks. And he runs out there for the 10th inning. You know, it was like crazy to just to see that. It was surreal. So he pitches 10 shutout innings, walks zero, and loses the game. So that was a I just looked it up. Crazy. It was versus Matt Kane when Kane was in his prime. What was the date on that? Uh, 2012. I'm looking for the date. Uh, this story was from February. So, oh, on April 18th, 2012. Oh, wow. wow. So. I wonder how many pitches he – obviously, he was under 100 pitches, I'm sure, probably, for the, for nine innings, right? Yeah, I'm when trying to find that. Did, he did, went did. out for the 10th. But I remember it being surreal when he ran out, and the crowd got really quiet because everybody knew what was happening. He ran ran out there for the 10th inning and 10 shots. He shot threw just eight. 102 pitches in 10 innings. Oh, wow. wow. So that, that, was, de oh, that wow. is dealing. <laughs> that was – yeah, that was something. And then he lost the game. It was oh, that's oh. brutal. That's Brutal. that's wild. Jim, it's it's remarkable to hear all the great stories you have. And sure. yesterday was such a, a cool moment in baseball history, but you've seen a lot of baseball history yourself. So basically what I'm getting is when Jim Salisbury's in the ballpark, great things are very likely to happen. <laughs> well, I, I don't know about that. I just have been I've you just seen get to a, lot a lot of games. There's <laughs> been a lot of games for uh, that part. I've, I've seen a lot of a lot of, I'm trying to think of some others, but uh, they'll probably come to me. But uh, <laughs> every day, you know, it's it's true uh, what they say. I know it's a cliche, but every day at the ballpark, you have a chance to see something you've never seen before. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is the beauty of the game. Jim, last one for you as we uh, wrap up here. Johan Rojas's defense. He mm. appears to have really righted the ship there. And that, that catch last night in the 10th inning, I mean, that's a game-saving catch. His His defense has been spectacular lately. It should be. It needs to be. That's his calling card. So you better be good at the stuff right. you're supposed to be good at if yeah. you're going to be here and contribute. So, yeah, that was a big play last night, a game saver, like you said. Uh, mm -hmm. 
Not sure anybody else on the roster gets to that uh, because he's, he's, you know, he's, he's quick. He's got that great closing speed. Uh, but you can help a team win a game in all kinds of ways, you know, with a walk, with a great mm-hmm. defensive play, with a heads up base running play, with a big hit. Uh, it's not always just doubles off the wall and home runs that win ball games. Sure. It takes all the little things. Uh, eliminating bonehead plays uh, can win can, can win you ball games. So, good job by Johan Rojas. You you know, do the things the things that you do well. You need to do well. And uh, he he came out last night and did that. So, a lot of little things in that game were real positives. And um, it's always good to win the first one of them home stand, especially when you got. Aaron Nola picking you up on the second night. So you have a chance to extend this uh, winning streak a little bit more.